Welcome to the next episode of our running and science uh, videos. Uh, today we're looking at intermittent fasting and whether or not it improves performance. This is a question that we get very often and it, it can be quite contentious I guess and, and it's very popular at the moment around whether or not intermittent fasting is good for your running performance. And so we're going to be diving into two scientific papers today talking exactly around this. The first of the studies that we are going to be talking about today is titled Within Day Energy Deficiency and Metabolic Perturbation in Male Endurance Athletes. This study was done by Monica Torsfleet et al. at the University of Agda. I know that sounds like a lot of sciencey jargon, but what exactly does that mean in layman's terms? Ultimately, what they are aiming to do is to see what intermittent fasting, what effect that has on within day, so within a 24 hour cycle energy balance and energy availability you might have, and what effect that has on metabolic rates and your hormone system, your endocrine system. So in terms of the methodology for this paper, they use 31 male endurance athletes, so that ranged between cyclists, long distance runners and triathletes. They made use of body composition measures, gas analysis, so that's oxygen consumption, VO2 max testing for example, to measure the metabolic ratio, so that's an energy intake versus energy expenditure, and to determine what effect that had on your metabolism in a 24 hour cycle. The second of the studies that we will be looking at is titled Within Day Energy Deficiency and Reproductive Function in Female Endurance Athletes. The study was conducted by I. Fahrenholtz at the University of Copenhagen. The aim of this study is to see how intermittent fasting affects within day energy balance, so the energy availability and the energy balance between females with a regular or normal menstrual cycle versus females with a menstrual dysfunction. In addition, it's also looking to see whether or not intermittent fasting has an effect or the lack of energy balance has an effect on resting metabolic rate, cortisol levels, as well as fasting glucose levels. The methodology in the study reviewed data of energy intake versus energy expenditure in 25 female endurance athletes. The protocols included measurements of body composition, resting metabolic rate, blood plasma volumes, as well as calculations of within day energy balance in one hour intervals. I'm going to hand over to Shona now to discuss what the results and the outcomes of the study were, as well as what this means for you. Now that you know how the studies were done, who they were done on, and what they were trying to prove, let's, let's dive into the outcomes of the studies. What were the results of these studies? So let's look at the, the one done on males first. There's a number of results that came from this. So intermittent fasting increases cortisol levels, as well as increases your, your catabolic state. What does that mean? That means that essentially your muscle breakdown which is, which is where we use the term catabolic, is increasing by doing intermittent fasting. The increase in cortisol levels, that's a, your cortisol is a stress hormone, so when we exercise, that's a natural reaction that there's a release of cortisol. But what intermittent fasting does is it increases that release of, of cortisol, which isn't good to have their body in a constant state of stress. And then the last really important finding when it came to the male study is that it decreases your testosterone, testosterone cortisol ratio. What does that mean and why is that important is that that has got everything to do with your ability to recover and your ability to get the maximum benefit from your exercises. And so if you're not, if that is, if that ratio is a little bit out of whack, your, your testosterone is probably going down and your cortisol level is going up. Testosterone is really important for strength and, and power and, and, and building that sort of endurance and strength. That's really important. And then if, we, if we're having that ratio out where the cortisol is going up and the testosterone is going down, you're not going to be recovering and you're not going to be getting the benefits of your training. And all of this is happening if you are doing intermittent fasting. Very similarly, in, in the study that looks at females, we see a similar sort of effect with intermittent fasting is that there's an increase in cortisol. And what does that mean? Essentially is that, as I mentioned earlier, is that the, when we exercise, there's, there's a natural increase in cortisol. When we're running, there's, that's a normal stress hormone, but we want that cortisol level to come down eventually. But when we're intermittent fasting, that inc natural increase in, in, in cortisol level is actually even more so. 
What does this mean for female health? Is that if this increase in cortisol happens for a prolonged period of time, so if you're intermittent fasting every single day and we're doing this continuously for a prolonged period of time, we are going to see hormonal dysfunction occurring. What does that mean? Let's, let's, let's sort of put that into, into layman's terms. When we have hormonal dysfunction in females, that can have an effect on different sorts of aspects. We can have menstrual dysfunction, so we can not have regular periods. We can start losing our periods. Um, and, and just not seeing those sort of happening as cyclic as they should. That can have an effect on, on bone stress, um, on just general physiological systems, um, and of course, a, a drop in your performance as well. This can also lead to a lot of fatigue and, and where we're just constantly feeling tired all the time because we have this imbalance of energy output and energy input, and also an effect on, on, your, on managing your weight. This has got to do with, with your metabolism. I'm going to dive into a little bit more on that in, in, in just a second. But really, this effect on your entire hormonal system and, and what's going on physiologically is as a result of this constant intermittent fasting and not really weighing up our energy input to our energy output. So when we have this, this everyday prolonged effect of, of energy sort of input doesn't quite match our energy output, the body starts to register an energy deficit. What that does is it brings down your basal metabolic rate. Okay, so essentially what is happening is that your body realizes that it's getting less energy. So it, it, it brings down the amount of energy or that's required to just survive on a daily level, not even including things like exercise. So essentially what that means is that the body settles for less energy. And so then when we're exercising and then when we, when we are taking in more food or more, more nutrition, the body then sort of goes, oh wow, okay, I've got this now and I'm going to hang on to everything. And that is why very often intermittent fasting might show nice results in the beginning in terms of, of weight loss, but over a prolonged period of time, you'll actually land up gaining more weight at the end of that. Okay, great. So we've gone through all the science, but what does this mean for you? What, how does this affect you and your running? There's three main sort of conclusions that I want to take from this. The first one is this, that at best, you may get some sort of performance improvements with intermittent fasting, but at absolute worst, it is going to cause very detrimental health effects for you. So is it really worth that risk of, of, of performance versus health? Uh, and, and these studies are showing that that is a very, very thin line. The second big takeaway from both of these studies is that essentially some males might get, get some performance improvement from intermittent fasting, but very often females will not be getting that improvement. That intermittent fasting is possibly more effective in males than it is in females. That's not to say for all males, uh, and it's, and it's, but it's to say that for the most part, females will not benefit from intermittent fasting and in your performance specifically. And the last point is, is less of a conclusion of these two studies, but more around, I think we need to start thinking specifically around our training and our performance and what can we add to our nutrition to improve our performance as opposed to what can we take away from our nutrition to improve our performance. Let's rather look at aspects that we can really maximize and, and, and contribute to our nutrition to ensure that we are getting the maximum performance we possibly can. I hope you got some value from this video today and if you did please let us know your thoughts if you've used intermittent fasting, if you haven't, if you have any ideas that you have on this please comment uh, below the video. So now that we have simplified these two papers for you, just keep in mind that science is always evolving. These are just two particular studies that we have found. If you'd like to dig into those studies in a little bit more detail, we have put the links to these studies in the description below. If you found this interesting, be sure to check out some of our other videos in our Running Science series. If there are any other topics that you'd really like us to, to find the science behind and, and dig into for you, please let us know in the comments below as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon.